Welcome, young adventurers, to the exciting world of organisms, populations, and communities. Today, we'll explore the fascinating relationships between living things and discover the importance of food chains. Get ready for an adventure in nature. Let's start with organisms. An organism is a living thing, like plants, animals, fungi, or even tiny microorganisms. Each organism has a unique role to play in the ecosystem. When organisms of the same kind gather together, we call it a population. They live and reproduce in a specific place and time. Think of a group of ants marching or a flock of birds flying together. Now, picture many different populations living together in a particular place. That's called a community. It's like a bustling neighborhood full of various plants, animals, and other organisms, each contributing to the ecosystem's balance. But where do these populations live? They inhabit a place called a habitat. A habitat provides everything a population needs to survive. Food, water, shelter, and more. It's like a cozy home for all the organisms. Speaking of food, let's dive into the world of food producers. Food producers are organisms that make their own food through photosynthesis. Can you guess who they are? That's right. Plants are the superheroes of food production. They have a special pigment called chlorophyll that traps light energy. Using sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, plants create food in a process called photosynthesis. Plants are not just amazing food producers, they are also a crucial part of the food chain. A food chain shows the predator-prey relationship between organisms. Imagine a grasshopper munching on grass, and a lizard hunting and eating the grasshopper. The lizard becomes the predator, and the grasshopper is its prey. Food chains always start with a food producer, like grass in this case. All the energy in a food chain comes from the sun. Plants use sunlight during photosynthesis to produce sugar, storing it as chemical potential energy. This energy is then passed on to plant eaters when they consume the plants. Food consumers, like animals, cannot make their own food. They depend on plants or other organisms for energy. Some animals are herbivores, eating only plants, while others are carnivores or omnivores, consuming both plants and animals. Herbivores, like rabbits and cows, feast on plants, while carnivores, such as lions and eagles, dine on other animals. Omnivores, like bears and humans, have a varied diet, including both plants and animals. Sometimes, a predator can also become prey. For instance, a frog may be a predator to insects but a prey to a snake. It's like a never-ending game of survival in the wild. To better understand these relationships, we can use a food pyramid. It not only shows the food connections between organisms but also reflects their population sizes and food supplies. At the bottom of the pyramid, we have the food producers, which form the largest population. As we move up, the population sizes decrease because more energy is needed to sustain each organism. Energy flows through a food chain, starting from the sun and passing on to plants, plant eaters, and meat eaters. However, some energy is lost as heat or used for life processes like respiration and movement. Due to this energy loss, animals higher up in the food chain need to eat more to gain enough energy. That's why a lion needs to hunt more prey than a grasshopper needs to eat grass. So, we've learned about organisms, populations, communities, food producers, food consumers, prey, predators, and food chains. These concepts work together to maintain balance and harmony in nature. Remember, every living thing has a role to play in this incredible web of life. So, young adventurers, get ready to embark on a thrilling quest and uncover the hidden wonders of the natural world. Subscribe to our channel, buckle up for this exhilarating journey, and prepare to ignite your passion for science as we delve into the extraordinary secrets waiting to be unveiled.